In this tutorial, we'll be adding a button to our microcontroller. Buttons and switches are the easiest method to add human input into microcontrollers. They come in many different forms like remote controls, keyboards, or even just a few buttons that provide many different functions. You could even get away with using only a few buttons like up and down for a menu system and then another button for selecting the menu selection. You have the option of using buttons which are just pushed down or you have the possibility of using switches that turn on and off. Press it in and it's always on. Press it out and it's always off. Similar to this, this is a slider switch. And then you have a toggle switch, on and off. You even have switches like this, it's a slider switch. There's even ominous looking switches like these. For this demonstration, we'll be using a simple button switch. And it only has two leads. So when the button's pressed, the two leads are shorted together. Before we get started, we need to know how this button works. This is the schematic symbol for a button. You can see that if you press it in that direction, that the button will close, which provides current flowing through the system. Now if the button is open, obviously the current stops here. So how do we connect this button to our microcontroller? We can't use the first pin because we have an LED on that one. So let's go ahead and use the second pin, which is pin number one. Right now our circuit looks like this. This is a resistor, this is our LED, and then this is ground, and this is pin number zero. We want to add a button to pin number one. We will also be connecting this switch to ground. You're probably wondering, why don't we connect it to five volts? Well, inside the microcontroller, we're going to be pulling this pin high, which means that this pin is always going to be five volts. It's going to be reading five volts until the button is pressed. And then once the button is pressed, it's going to be reading zero volts. But we still have a problem. There's an interesting phenomenon that happens with switches like this. When you press it, it creates a bouncing effect, which if it's at five volts, it's going to be bouncing up and down before it gets to zero volts. So that means it's going to think it's five volts and zero volts, five volts, zero volts, many, many times before it actually gets to zero volts. This will pose a problem. So we can either add a time delay in our programming. So when it reads this, we only consider these moments. But we can also add a component called a capacitor. And this capacitor will be connecting these two points. When we use a capacitor, our five volts is gonna look like this, down to zero volts. It's gonna give us a nice curve. A capacitor stores energy, just like a cup of water stores water. But the capacitor also allows the water to escape. And notice that if our button is doing this, the water still comes out in an even flow until there's no more water. You'll notice I've made a few changes. This is the same circuit I've had before. Pin number one is going to a resistor here, and the resistor is going to the LED, and the LED is going to the negative pole. So when pin number zero is activated, the LED will turn on. Now I'm gonna make a couple more changes to this breadboard so I can power the plus rail, and I can put the ground on the negative rail all the way around the breadboard. Since these are two separate breadboards, I'm gonna to have to tie them together from negative to negative, positive to positive, and the same on the top. But you'll also notice that the bottom rail is separated from the top rail, so I have to also connect the positive to positive here and the negative to negative here. But they're still not getting any power. That's where we connect VCC, which is the positive pin, to the positive rail, and like this wire, it's the ground to the negative wire. So we'll get positive and ground all the way around our breadboard. <music> we can add our button on two empty ties. Our first wire goes from pin one to the first pin of the push button. The other leg of the button goes to ground. I'll be using a 0.22 microfarad capacitor. I selected this capacitor value because it's quick enough to give me a good response on the button but it won't introduce any noise. The capacitor is installed between the two pins. Now let's see if we can program this push button. Remember the data direction register? On the LED, we assigned it a one for pin B0. That set it for output. But on pin B1, we need to set that to input. We will use the AND NOT bitwise operation to do this.
Remember that when we do press the button, we should get a zero reading or a zero volt reading on that pin. And when we leave the button alone, the pin reading should be five volts. So we need to set the pin high. And the way to do that is port B. And we're gonna use the, the OR bitwise operation and set that pin B to one for the port register. So within this endless loop, we need to put a condition. And the condition is to know whether the button is pressed or not and what to do if it is. We want a code block if the button is pressed and a code block when the button is not pressed. So this is generally what we're gonna do and what the actual condition is will go here. And the easiest way to determine whether pin B1 is zero or one, we use a function called bit is clear. And then we have two arguments, which is the first one is which pin set. And we're looking at the set of pins B, which is in port B. And we're looking at the specific pin one. And this will show true if the bit is clear or if the, this particular pin is clear. And if it's not clear, then it'll go to the else. Now, what do we want to put inside of this code block? So for this example, I'll change the rate at which the LED is blinking. When I am pressing the button, which this will be the code, I'll have a delay of 10 milliseconds, which is a fast blinking. And if it's not pressed, I'll have it blinking at 100 milliseconds, which is over here. So I'll just take this one out and replace this. So now if the button is pressed, it'll blink at 10 milliseconds. If the button is not pressed, it'll blink at 100 milliseconds. And that way we'll know the button is working. Let's compile our code and send it to the microcontroller and see if it works. So let's see if it works. Right now the LED is blinking slowly at 100 milliseconds. When I press the button, it is blinking fast at 10 milliseconds. Now you know how to implement a button, connect it to an AVR, and make it work.